So after having your product backlog and some of the product backlog item ready enough, you may want to plan your sprint. That's something you want to do. The only thing you need to do in order to get started by with using Zira is click the button, create sprint. So let's click and see what happens. Now, if you have been using sprints already, then the Jira will create the automatic and next sprint by taking the previous state, finished state from a previous sprint. Uh, you can definitely edit it in case you don't want to continue in the same way. Uh, but if you are doing it first time, then these start date and date may not come to uh, in, in your uh, data. We can click on edit string, uh, sprint. We can define the change the start date in case we want to. And we can definitely put the sprint duration or also can select the end date. So it depends. We can focus on sprint duration oriented date or we can focus on the end date based sprint uh, cycles as well. Here you have a facility to create a sprint goal. So it's like that you are starting your sprint planning meeting and you just create a sprint. You want to declare what is your sprint goal. Sprint goals are like one small two-liner, three-liner statement, which creates a clear idea of what we want to do in a given sprint. So we may want to say that create a build a foundational functionality. Yeah. So say building foundational functionality for our uh, uh, wowhotels.com. That's something we were uh, focusing on. So this is, again, a text information uh, plays an important role for communication purpose, for, but from a tool perspective, it's just a description, yeah? So you create a, a sprint, click update, your sprint is, is ready. Now you see the sprint is ready, but there is nothing in it. So when you are having a sprint planning meeting, your product owner might have already prioritized the product backlog items. Yeah, you might have already estimated them. Now we, we need to pull some of the items from product backlog and place them into the sprint uh, for our planning activity. It could be a collaborative act. First, you may end up discussing. And once the discussions are over, then you may do it in a Jira and where you map that, okay, these are the items you want to do in a given uh, sprint. You can do it one by one, or you can do in a bulk as well. So let's see how to do it. So may go to a particular user story one by one. Uh, so you can go to a particular user story, click a right button, and then you can see this sprint in your uh, uh, space, you know, send to, there is an option to directly send to a particular sprint. You can choose the sprint which you have cre uh, created. You can see that is coming here. You just select it, the item will move to that particular sprint. Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. I, I think you can also do a drag and drop, if, if I'm not wrong, uh, uh, from, from a backlog to the sprint as well. So that's also a possible functionality. So that's, these are the way, simple UI oriented way to take the backlog into and, the, yeah. And by pressing shift key, you can select multiple item and you can move multiple item in one go as well. One go as well. Perfect. Yeah. Now, if you have already put some label uh, to, to, to identify all the possible items from product backlog, which you want to move, you can also apply your filter criteria and identify all the items which have already been discussed. Maybe uh, once you are doing it at a later stage and then also pull them uh, directly uh, and, and put them into a, a sprint. So it all depends how you want to do it. Usually people do this activity after having a discussion in a sprint planning meeting. So they are clear what they are doing. They are now just wanted to get started with those items. Okay, so let's see what all information we can see in the sprint summary level things. So uh, you can so see there are six have, issues yeah, uh, yeah. right now. Yeah, so there are like, you can see some information here uh, as, as pretty much visible that there are six issues. This is something you can see. There are the information which are available here where you can see that these are the user story points which we have picked up. Now, if you are doing a velocity driven planning, this might be your key decision making points because based on the number of story points, you may want to pick up the item. If you are doing commitment based story points, uh, commitment based sprint planning, then you need to do a detailed planning for those items here so that you can identify will all these items stay here or not. So we can see how possibly we can add uh, the task, or you can call it subtask under a particular user story, which is already planned in a, a sprint. So we go one by one, Kapil, one by one. So we, okay. not, not to start yet, yeah, we go to a particular story issue, which is whatever, uh, hopefully now you got the, the idea. So you open that particular thing in a detail interface, and then you go and talk about create subtask. So that's the important uh, menu. Uh, Kapil is, is pointing it out to create subtask. This is where you have to create. Click on a create subtask. 
And here it is, say, I want to do C development just, just as, a, as a sake of, of single, a simple thing. And I, I just create a, a, a subtask. Yeah, so I create a thing. I can possibly work on the details of this particular task. So let's wait for two tasks only uh, and, and see what all we can do here. Yeah, let's explore what is associated with create subtask. So if you, uh, along with the, uh, 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 this creation of a subtask, if there is a possibility of assigning individuals to it, you can do that. Yeah, you can assign those work here also. You can keep it unassigned also, which may make you assign them at a later stage yeah, during the sprint, but there's a possibility you can assign it here as well. What else we can do? We can also assign the priority to it. Yeah, that's something uh, we can do. And we can get into the detail of that particular task also. Yeah. So here we are getting into the detail of that particular task. So uh, here there are uh, things to estimate the time into minutes, if I'm not wrong. It's the hours or minutes, what it is. No, no, we, we can estimate in any format. Like if we put M, then it would be in minute. If we put H, then it would be in R. If we put day D, then it will be in days. It's up to us. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. And, and you can see that there is a possibility of task level mapping to the versions also, release versions also. Sometime you may not want to release the whole user story. You can release the task as well. That's also a possibility in a way. Uh, but yeah, majorly when you are doing sprint planning, you are more interested in understanding that particular item, uh, adding the estimated time to it, and probably assigning some person to it. Now, if you have some more details, so say there is some information available, you can also attach documents with it. So say you have some image, some class diagram, something yeah, which you want to put it there for a reference, you can definitely do a attachment also with that particular task. Yeah. But so this is something we can uh, do with our uh, 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 sub-level task created in the user story. We go to our sprint backlog again. Yeah, so this is how our sprint backlog is. Uh, some of the, the one of the item which we took and we also took it at a subtask level. Others are still having at a high level details only. Yeah, that's something we can see it here. Now it depends how you want to do your sprint planning. In some cases, uh, the teams wants to have the detailing for each and every user story during the sprint planning meeting only. In other cases, they may want to have it later on. They just want to have a first level details added at this particular level. Any other things you want to point out on this screen before we start a sprint, before we start a sprint, just focusing on sprint planning meeting, Kapil? Uh, yes, so before starting the sprint, uh, these are the things that we focus on, like story point estimation should be there. And uh, other things would happen like, when you are ready for making the commitment, then you have to click on the start screen. Perfect, perfect. So this is this is a good good thing where you are checking up these things. Now, in some cases, you may want to have some more analytical data. You may want to check these details by way of some reporting. Usually, that all work is done before we add and load items into the sprint. Like usually, team end up doing their sprint planning meeting before they create a sprint in the Jira, you know, you, you, you already have a clarity and now you want to put the information into the Jira so that you can get started with it. That's a usual thing. Now you might be wondering, can I do it in the separate Excel file and then just get started? Yes, that's the plan for our next video. We will show it to you how you can do it in the Excel file, the whole sprint planning, and then probably you just want to put it into the Jira and get started. That's a flow in the plan. Okay, so maybe we just want to see how the start button click works and probably what all information get added once we start the, the sprint. Assuming our sprint planning is over and we just want to commit to a sprint. <clears throat> so there would be one change occur after start sprint is done. If we add any other uh, other thing into the sprint, then it uh, Jira would uh, provide a pop-up. Say you are changing the scope of the sprint. Currently, mm -hmm. we can add, we can remove. There is no restriction on that. Perfect, yeah. So we are just starting the sprint and it is showing me how many days are there. And yes, so now we get another view of that as well in the active sprint. Mode. So that's an interesting thing. This active sprint option is in most of the cases is your go-to place. 
you know if you are a scrum master or a team member you will usually more hanging around at an active sprint area if you are a product owner you might be spending more time in a backlog area but this is the place where the team members will usually point to yeah and here you can see your task board jira task task board you can see all the stories which you have pulled, uh, pulled. they are coming in the to do space you can see it at a story level you can also see it at a task level also uh, if you have uh, created the the subtasking into it so that's also a, a possibility uh, if you have assigned the people you then you can summary filter it based on who has been assigned where and as you know the execution part of the sprint we will explore further as well but we are just wanted to uh, stop here and show that okay we just started with the sprint and we have all these items in the in the backlog space uh, there is also a sprint report which is an emerging thing you may want to show a sprint report kabir yes first just i want to show that there is some change occur over here like okay. uh, we can see the story point some when we started a sprint it would show us the status like 32 points is the total uh, estimated uh, story point or commitment for this particular sprint and if we move that into in progress then it would show in the in progress then in the done status so three Perfect. status are there so I, I personally feel this is the screen which is primarily designed for the product owners, you know, backlog, you know, you product owner should be always going there. And when the product owner probably working on the backlog and may want to have a view of what is working and what is not working. So based on that, I need to decide, should I put more items for the next sprint or less item for the next sprint? So all the time, whenever I go to my backlog screen, I can get a quick snapshot of what is happening in my sprint. And this information is pretty handily available to the uh, product owner, primarily to the product owner, but anyone who has an access to this area can definitely see it. Uh, so maybe a quickly on active sprint report and then we uh, uh, conclude this video. Okay, so there is one report uh, also available for every sprint, that is a sprint report. Currently we just started the sprint, so that report would not be completed, but when we complete the sprint, then also we can uh, see this particular report for the, uh, you can say, sprint completion report as well. Perfect, yeah. So a single so all, report works for two, other, two different purposes. Perfect, so it's a it's an ongoing thing where all the time, every movement, it is showing the health of your sprint all the time. That's the, the thing. And it's also showing possible projection yeah. of finishing the work. We will talk about these reports uh, uh, when we get into the detail, but this video, we wanted to just focus on sprint planning and show you how the sprint planning triggers various activity which will facilitate our sprint execution. Okay, so, but before we get into a sprint execution, we will talk about uploading through Excel file our sprint backlog so that we can facilitate and do our work faster uh, than just dragging, dropping each and every item. And that's the plan for our next video.